What's going on, everybody? This is AB Two Phones checking in with y'all. So I've managed to get my hands on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So I'm gonna daily drive it for a while just to test it out. Fun fact about me is that I'm an OG Pixel fan. My first ever phone that I bought with my own money was the Nexus S. And I was pretty loyal to Nexus and Pixel all the way up until OnePlus came out. And I had all the OnePluses until the OnePlus 7 Pro, which was an iconic phone. From there, I jumped ship to nothing phone. But the Pixel 9 looks great, so I wanted to test it out. It's always a happy feeling getting a new device and going through the initial setup. So let's go over my personal first things to do with the Pixel 9 Pro XL. So first we're going to go into the settings and make sure that the refresh rate and the resolution is all the way up. This phone has a 6.8 inch OLED display with a maximum of 3000 nits and the refresh rate is 120 hertz. The PPI is 486. So usually most smartphones come out the box with the screen set to 1080p, which I usually leave at 1080p because I don't mind the lesser pixels because it's less taxing to the chipset and it offers better battery life. But since I'm testing this phone out, I'm going to boost everything all the way up. Next, I'm going to set a new wallpaper. And in my opinion, setting the wallpaper is the most important part of setting up your new phone. My favorite wallpaper application is Backdrops. I get a lot of my walls from that app, but I'm a nerd and a wannabe designer. So recently I've made some of my own wallpapers. I've created my own wallpaper pack. It's called Enjoyment Wallpapers, and that link will be down below. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some of those wallpapers in this setup. Each wallpaper has an OLED fade variant where the wallpaper fades to pitch black towards the bottom of the screen, leaving the icons in your dock very visible and bright. Ever since I made these, I just can't use anything else because they look so good to me. So in Android, when you toggle the theme from light mode to dark mode, the wallpaper stays exactly the same and it doesn't dim at all, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because you'll have a darker UI and maybe darker icons, but the wallpaper will still remain extremely bright. So it's an absolute must for me to download this app called Dual Wallpapers, which basically allows you to pick two separate wallpapers for your dark mode and light mode and the wallpaper switch automatically when you hit that toggle. This is a clutch app, and honestly, this should be the stock way to pick wallpapers on Android. So now that we have the wallpaper set up, I'm going to go and change the animation speed. To do that, we're going to have to enable developer options and then go and find the animations tab. I remember back in the Nexus 5 days, they had an animation speed for 0.57X which was perfect because it was still smooth, but also allowed for more snappy animations. But recently I've only seen 0.5X, which is a little bit too fast for me. So if there is a 0.75X, I'm definitely going to set it to that immediately. Pixel Launcher doesn't allow you to remove the Google Now bar at the top of the home screen, which is absolutely horrible. Your home screen is the most important part of your phone and you should be able to customize that part specifically to what you want. I still don't see why they don't allow us to remove this after all these years. This is absolutely crazy. I'm not going to install a custom launcher just yet, but I surely will in the future. But I'm still going to add some widgets on the home screen. And if you're a customization nerd like me, then you already know that adding widgets to your home screen is the second most important thing to do. And there's a bunch of good widget apps out there, but I'm just gonna go straight to KWGT because this just opens up a world of options. And one of my favorite widget packs is CUDA for custom. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that and then just search through the widgets for this pack. I don't have a specific favorite widget for this. When I get a new phone, I literally just come to this pack and just pick a widget because it always turns out fire. Next, I'm going to download this app called Micro Gestures. And this app just allows you to perform specific options by just twitching your phone, which is kind of cool. And this app does wonders for me when it comes to one-handed usage. So it's a must that I download this app when I get a new phone. The options in this app can get very advanced, but I just use two or three simple gestures like the back gesture and a gesture for swiping down the notification panel. With my small hands, I'll have to perform some finger gymnastics. So this gesture really comes in handy for me. I set it to a quick tilt to automatically show the quick settings. I highly advise that y'all check this out and set up some gestures for your own. And while setting up this phone, I just remembered that the Pixel Launcher does not let you double tap to lock the phone. 
not having this really reminds me just how crucial that gesture is again normally i would download nova launcher but i'm not just yet because i really want to test out the stock ui and an underrated feature of nova launcher is the customizations for the app drawer because it allows you to set up tabs and even folders in the app launcher and even switching up the colors as well for both light mode and dark mode as you can see here so i'll set this up in the future and that video will be linked down below when it comes out so that's two crucial parts of the os that i already hate you can't double tap to lock and you can't remove the google at a glance widget but those two things alone don't make the phone bad right right the last thing i'm going to do is test out the cameras really quick i know this is a very important part for most people but it's not for me because I barely go outside and I barely take pictures unless I'm taking a video for YouTube. But I'll take some very quick test shots and compare them with the iPhone 15 Pro Max and leave that here for y'all to see. So the Pixel 9 Pro XL has a 50 megapixel main sensor with the f1.7 aperture and a 48 megapixel telephoto lens and a 48 megapixel ultra wide lens. I'll leave that up to y'all to see if there's a huge difference between the quality in these two phones. So now let's look at the different lock screen customization options. In the past update, they added the ability to change the clock on the lock screen. So I'm just going to go through these and see which one that I like. And for the lock screen shortcuts, I'm just going to take these off because I kind of enjoyed the extra minimal lock screen. And they don't have the ability to open up Messenger or YouTube, which is the two things that I would put on my lock screen. So I'll just take all of these off. Next, let's look at the screenshot app. This is the new app that came with the newer Pixel phones and I believe it uses AI to search through all your screenshots. I don't have any pictures here yet, so I just took some test screenshots just so things can show up right here. And I'll do a quick search for Anchor just to see if it pulls up the Anchor screenshot that I just took. And it did, so that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna check out the new Pixel Weather application. The APK for this application was leaked. So funny thing is I did put this on my nothing phones, but now that I have a Pixel, I can see the real application and it is pretty similar, but it is beautiful. It uses the Google Pixel aesthetic and this is definitely going to be my go-to weather application. All right, so that's my personal first things to do when setting up a new phone. This Pixel 9 Pro does feel pretty clean and I'll be coming out with a full review. So subscribe if you want to see that. And also if you want to see some pretty cool apps to download on your Android phone, then click this video right here and I'll talk to y'all next time.